North Korea has sent 1,500 soldiers to Ukraine, who are believed to have previously guarded the dictator's father Kim Jong-il, according to Bild. As media sources reported, in early October, Kim Jong-un visited a special unit in the Western District of the Korean People's Army, which is considered one of the most brutal in the world. Build columnist Peter Tita calls them combat slaves because they were raised in an information vacuum with no external influence. They had no access to the internet, Western television, or mobile phones. The agency also notes that these future soldiers were indoctrinated with an ideology that prepared them to destroy NATO devils and the enemies of their beloved leader. Recently, the number of flights of Russian military transport aircraft and 124 between Vladivostok and Pyongyang has been increasing. It is believed that they were also transporting fighters. At least 400 of them are reportedly training in barracks near Khabarovsk. According to South Korean intelligence, they were given fake documents and Russian passports, disguised as Bariats and Yakuts. In early October, South Korean Defense Minister Kim Yong-hyun stated that North Korea might send troops to Ukraine in support of Russia. Later, it became known that North Korea had transferred its special operations forces to Russia, which are among the most secretive in the world. Additionally, Ukrainian Defense Intelligence Chief Kirill Budinov revealed that North Korean soldiers will begin fighting against Ukraine in November. While the Russian armed forces are suffering defeat in their attempt to recapture the Kursk region from the Ukrainian armed forces, Russian TV is dreaming of victories over America. Propagandist Vladimir Solovyov called for devastating strikes against the United States on the state-run Russia One TV channel. On the program, the propagandists discussed the fight against the American dollar. Solovyov, after listening to the expert, proposed his own method, the complete destruction of the USA. My approach is much more humane, much faster and much simpler. The Strait, named after Stalin in place of the United States. Cockroaches drown. People survive, we tell them in advance to run away, and the cockroaches drown, the propagandist said with a smile. His words greatly pleased the invited experts. Recently, Russian military expert Igor Korotchenko recently suggested on state-owned TV that the Kremlin plans to attack U.S. ships with nuclear weapons. Earlier, U.S. officials revealed to the Associated Press that President Joe Biden has since allowed Ukraine to use American-made weapons to fight against Russia's attacks or planned attacks in the Kharkiv region. The weapons are only allowed to be used to defend Kharkiv, Ukraine's second largest city, and Kyiv is not to use American-provided long-range missiles. In my opinion, there is only one adequate, fast and effective response to the increased strikes against the territory of the Russian Federation with American long-range weapons since Biden and U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan have given the green light and Ukraine's armed forces will carry it out. Total destruction of all electrical generation in Ukraine, Korotchenko recently said. Recall Russia is amending its doctrine on the use of nuclear weapons as a response to perceived Western involvement in the Ukraine war. Despite Foreign Minister of Russia Sergei Ryabkov said that the decision to change the nuclear doctrine is connected with the escalation course of our Western adversaries. In late August, Ukraine confirmed it had used weapons supplied by the United States in its Kursk incursion. In theory, Russia could lower the threshold at which it might use nuclear weapons, a bar currently set for either nuclear attacks on its territory or conventional attacks that threaten its existence or sovereignty as a state. Russian military propagandists are starting to openly talk about the need to end the war with Ukraine as quickly as possible. The huge losses of Russian military, which can no longer be hidden, are making a depressing impression on Russians. In a live broadcast on one of the Russian TV channels, retired colonel military observer of Komsomolskaya Pravda, Mikhail Timoshenko, spoke about the internal mood in Russia regarding the war and the situation in the army. According to him, more and more Russians are beginning to think about how many more lives will be lost and whether it is worth continuing the war amid the chaos with payments and benefits for combat veterans. People are starting to think, well, to hell with it. How many more guys are going to die? We don't need this anymore, he said. 
The propagandist also emphasized the level of corruption in the Russian Defense Ministry, which has seriously bled the Russian army dry. Russia's total losses since the full-scale invasion of Ukraine now total 600,000. These figures are approaching the level of losses in the initial stages of Operation Barbarossa during World War II. The corresponding statement was made by the head of the NATO PA, U.S. Congress member Jerry Connolly, in a conversation with Radio Liberty. According to him, such a high level of losses is a reason for Western allies to draw certain conclusions about the state of the Russian army. According to the congressman, the Kremlin's decision to involve North Korean troops in the war against Ukraine demonstrates the weakness of the Russian army. It indicates that Russian potential is exhausted. The politician emphasized that North Korea has one of the largest armies in the world, but the last time it took part in military action was 70 years ago during the Korean War. The interlocutor believes that the DPRK expects to gain combat experience for its military during the war in Ukraine. As previously reported in September, the daily losses of the Russian army became the largest during the entire full-scale war. According to estimates by the British Defence Ministry, such dynamics are in particular connected with the battles in the Kursk region.